Previously, we studied ways to manipulate and measure vectors, projections of vectors, and linear mappings. We also know that mappings and transformations of vectors can be conveniently described as operations performed by matrices. Moreover, data is often represented quite well in matrix form. For example, the rows of a matrix might represent various people, while the columns describe different features of the people, such as their height, their weight, their age, the number of cars they own, etc. In this sequence of videos, we present three aspects of matrices, how to summarize matrices, how matrices can be decomposed, and how these decompositions can be used for matrix approximations. Determinants are an important concept in linear algebra. The determinant is a mathematical object in the analysis and solution of systems of linear equations. Determinants are only defined for square matrices, and they can be thought of as a map between n by n matrices to real numbers. Here's a theorem that links the determinant to invertibility. For any square matrix A, a is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is non-zero. For certain types of matrices, we have explicit closed form expressions for the determinants. So for example, for two by two matrices, the determinant of A is A11 times A22 minus A12 times A21. For three by three matrices, we follow Saris's rule that says that the determinant of A is A11, A22, A33, plus A21, A32, A13, plus A31, A12, A23, minus A31, A22, A13, minus A11, A32, A23, minus A21, A12, A33. Now, if that seems like a lot to memorize, draw out a three by three matrix and try and observe the pattern that Saris's rule provides. As a quick example, we'll find the determinant of the matrix A, one, three, four, six. The determinant is one times six minus four times three. So that's minus six. Another example, we might want to find the determinant of A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So following Saris' rule, we take 1, 5, 9 times 4, 8, 3, add 7 times 2 times 6, subtract 7 times 5 times 3, subtract 4 times 2 times 9, subtract 1 times 8 times 6, and in fact, we get 0. So this is a quick way to determine that this matrix doesn't have an inverse because the determinant is zero. We call a square matrix T an upper triangular matrix if Tij is equal to zero for every i that's bigger than j. That is, the matrix is zero below the main diagonal. Analogously, we define a lower triangular matrix as a matrix with zeros above the main diagonal. For any triangular matrix, the determinant of that matrix is simply the product of all the terms on the main diagonal. As an example, let's consider the matrix A, 1, 2, 3, 0, 5, 6, 0, 0, 9. It's upper triangular, since all the entries below the main diagonal are zero. And since it's triangular, we know that the determinant is the product of the entries on the main diagonal. So one times five times nine, or 45. We 
Even the determinant of an n by n matrix requires a general algorithm in cases that are bigger than n equals 3. This theorem reduces the problem to computing the determinant of an n by n matrix to computing the determinant of an n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix. By recursively applying this, this theorem, called Laplace expansion, we can keep paring down the problem until we end up with a problem computing two by two matrices. So here's the theorem. Consider an n by n matrix A. If we expand along column J, the determinant of A is going to be the sum negative 1 to the k plus j times akj times the determinant of akj. If we expand along row j, the determinant of a is the sum from k from 1 to n, negative 1 to the power of k plus j, a j k, determinant of a j k. Now here we define the matrix akj as an n minus 1 by n minus 1 submatrix of A that we get by deleting row K and column J. Let's go back to this example of the matrix A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We already know the determinant of A is 0, but let's calculate it using the Laplace expansion. So if we expand along column 1, we start with 1, times the determinant of the matrix that we get by removing row 1, column 1, from the matrix. So that's the sub-matrix 5, 6, 8, 9. And then negative 1 times 4, and then the matrix that we get by removing column 1, row 2. So that's the sub-matrix 2, 3, 8, 9. And then we add 7 and the submatrix that we get from removing column 1 and row 3. So that's the matrix 2, 3, 5, 6. And looking at each of those, we get a sum of 0. For an n by n matrix, we get the following properties. The determinant of a matrix product is the product of the corresponding determinants. Thus, the determinant of AB is determinant A times determinant B. Determinants are invariant to transposition. That means that the determinant of A is the same as the determinant of A transpose. If A is regular, that means invertible, then the determinant of A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A. Similar matrices have the same determinant. It's the same determinant. So if A is expressed in a different basis, then the determinant remains the same. Adding a multiple of a column or row to another one does not change the determinant of A. Multiplying a column or row by a scalar lambda scales the determinant by a factor of lambda to the n. Swapping two rows or columns changes the sign of the determinant. Because of these last three properties, we can use Gaussian elimination to compute the determinant of A by bringing A into row echelon form. We can stop Gaussian elimination when we have uh, matrix A in triangular form where the elements below the diagonal are all zero. If we recall from before, the determinant of a triangular matrix is the product of the diagonal elements. A square matrix A is determined different from zero if and only if the rank of A is equal to N. That is, a matrix is invertible if and only if it has full rank. When mathematics was mainly performed by hand, the determinant calculation was considered an essential way to analyze matrix invertibility. However, contemporary approaches to machine learning use direct numerical methods that supersede 
the explicit calculation of the determinant. For example, we know that we can compute an inverse using Gauss elimination. The trace of a square matrix is defined to be the sum of the entries along the main diagonal. So TR of A is the sum of the AIIs. The trace satisfies a number of important properties. The trace of A plus B is trace of A plus trace of B. The trace of alpha A is alpha times the trace of A. The trace of the identity matrix is N, if we're dealing with N by N identity matrices. And the trace of AB is the trace of A times trace of B, provided the multiplication works out properly. That is, provided the dimensions of A and B uh, make so that you can compute the trace of AB. The characteristic polynomial of a matrix A is defined to be PA of lambda. That's the determinant of A minus lambda I, where I is the identity matrix. The characteristic polynomial comes up in the exploration of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And these are going to be what we talk about in our next video.